We've got some questions. Uh, first question is, can I have a show of hands, how many people are managers? I know it's a very simple question to answer. What you do is you pull out the card, have a look at the card. If it says manager on your card, you're a manager. So how many are managers? Okay. Put your hands down if you're here to learn about Agile. Good. I don't have to apologize to anybody. Um, I don't want to talk about coaches. They're not the secret to any startup, and I'll concentrate mostly on startup. Um, I'm taking advantage of the fact this is an agile conference. Most of the people here will know about agile or will be interested or want to learn about it. So they will have the understanding of at least some of the technologies. So I think I'm preaching to the choir here. Um, what I'm trying to do is to get people to stop making mistakes. If you start up something and you bring over the old ways of thinking from your old organizations, you're going to end up failing. I don't want you to sleepwalk back into the old ways of doing things just because advisors say so. Let's see if this works. Um, forward. Right, there's the spoiler. Yes, it's no more managers, but it's actually more management. Okay? It's not working in a vacuum. You are still doing things that will control your organization, hopefully make it successful. I worked in a Bluetooth team at one point, and we were really good. Somebody had told us all about Scrum and Agile and stuff like that, and we started playing, and we started learning about it, and then they brought in a project manager, and this project manager took over. And in about six months, he completely destroyed the team, demoralized them. He started asking them to give him performance reports and stuff like that. It, it got disbanded. Didn't last very long at all. You might guess from this that I'm a rebel. And I think an awful lot of people who do Agile are rebels as well. They're sitting thinking, there must be a better way of doing this. And hopefully, I'm in a group of like-minded people. I'll find out after this talk, won't I? So, return on management. Uh, I did this a talk uh, a few months ago at Tom Gilb's present uh, festival that he does. Um, this is called scientific management. Okay. Whenever you have an agile organisation, sorry, scientific management ascribes everything that is profit to the management. So return on management is great. So none of us are important. We're just doing the jobs. We're down there in the operations costs. Yes. Not good. Not good at all. Um, Agile is slowed by wrapping it in management. Startups end up sleepwalking back into this culture of you need a manager. Unfortunately, if you go to investment, you'll find that the investors will say, oh, we need to demonstrate management capability. And if you haven't got a manager in there, they quite often will go and find you a manager as part of their deal with you. Um, I've used the word irrational because quite often managers make emotional decisions. It's going back to Daniel Kahneman, um, thinking fast and slow. And that's what real managers do. It's harsh, but it's true. They socialize requirements. Okay? In large organizations where most projects fail, most projects fail, they don't want to do an awful lot of work. If they do a Gantt chart, if they do a project plan, they never keep it up to date. They will simply go off and talk to the customer to manage expectations. Organizations try to be competitive. But unfortunately, they only have process and they have control. 
unfortunately, they don't use any rigor. So they won't listen to people like Tom Gilb, who says, you must quantify your requirements. They won't listen to many of the people in these, in these movements that will be saying, look, there must be more rigorous ways. There must be more rational ways of making decisions. The weapon of choice for, an for the average manager or the person who has no rigor is a form. Okay? It's the project you're c concerned with, not the plan. Okay. Unfortunately, it's your fault. You quite often are lazy. You think, oh, well, I'm not going to do this myself. I'm going, to, I'm going to let the manager sort this problem out. Okay? So if you end up seeing a process document and a form, you should have been a little bit more proactive. Yes? If we're coders, use software. Write some code. That over there is meant to be a 20-second action. It's meant to be the minimum that you could do in a situation where you needed something done straight away. You don't need to make it simple. You don't need to make it complicated, sorry. Um, I, I come from the mobile world, and so this is the sort of thing that I would do. We talk about 20-second actions because that's probably what people are going to have to be able to do something with a phone before they get fed up waiting for something to happen. Right, self-organize. If you do something regularly, you'll own it. It's repetition. That guy there, I went past his wall and he'd laid all his bricks out nice and neatly because that wall's going to end up having little pillars in the middle and he's laid them out exactly where he needs them. He's even got these little wooden boards so that he can make up the mortar for the bricks and he just plods on. He's set it out, he knows exactly how much his materials are and I went and talked to him and he has done this for years and I say, do you have this written down? No, of course not. Yeah. I just know how to do this sort of thing. Okay. Don't expect someone else to manage you. Learn your own procedures. Yes. And if you do things over and over again, either automate it using your technology or use a ceremony. I'll come back to ceremonies in a bit. Right. I've got quite a lot of techniques that I've looked at. Um, most of these are from my experience because I've been working in software for 50 years and I've done most jobs in most companies. I've worked in over 45 companies as a contract programmer. So these techniques I've grouped into these two areas, governance and growth. Um, and I'll quickly go through these sorts of things. They're not hard processes. These are just, you know, these are the things that I think that any startup will need. Certainly an agile organization will need but I fail to see how big organizations can become agile. The changes that I've seen in organizations have been almost akin to completely restarting the organization. They've had to dismantle everything. I have heard that in truly agile organizations or organizations that transform themselves, they lose 30% of their workforce. Nearly all of those are managers. Remember, it's going to be hard. So, anti-hierarchy. Now, this is where we get into the trashing bit. Um, somebody has a go at me about the word teal. This is Frederick Laloux's uh, theories that organisations go through um, a sort of a development, an evolution. I don't think they do. We just have lots and lots of different organisations. We have the Reds, which are like gangs of people, they're the, they're the sort of autocracies, right the way up to teal. And then somebody last night said to me, we don't use the word teal, we use turquoise. I think the translation has recently said that. Um, so I'm going to concentrate on startups as teal organisations. And in fact, the lightning talk I'll do later will be be more teal or possibly be more turquoise. 
you have a difficulty, which is that in any organisation, we have lived through some of the earlier cultures and other organisations. So we still have this mentality of hierarchy. We still have this mentality of command and control. And this is the point. That diagram up there is from holacracy. And they were trying to demonstrate these circles of influence. And what they have done is they've mapped it onto a hierarchy. They still have hierarchies built in. They still think you need a leader. They still think that the organisation will have representation. It's not going to be there. If you have a company or anything that has performance reviews, then you're setting someone up to be an authority over the others. Okay. And the position you get into is assigned, not earned. Personal identity. I'll let you read that. The quick ones will have got to the bottom. You shouldn't knock astrology. <laughs> Psychological astrology is all about personality. And in fact, a good astrologer will probably tell you more about you than your mother knows. That's assuming that you give them your birth details in the first place. This is very important. If you're going to work in a team, you need to learn about yourself. You need to know these things. And there are many different t ways of doing this. I've, I've used some testing services in the UK. Um, and I'm sure that there are similar testing services here locally and worldwide. There's, there's quite a lot. You then need to have team identity. The one I think is foremost is the Belbin roles. And that slogan comes from Belbin. No one's perfect, but a team can be. So each, each role has been described. You can normally find in a certain type of job, like software developer, um, uh, architect, designer, things like that. You will find certain lists of attributes that will be needed for that person. Um, I've got the list here, but I, I can't be bothered reading it. Workshops. This is the fundamental activity in most startups, or should be. Never do loan working. Always work in a team. I see this team is all leaving at the same time. Bye bye. I don't understand if somebody says, I, I want to work on my own, I like to find out why they don't want to work on their own. I worked with in one team where there was one guy that refused to pair up with anybody else until eventually I found out that his eyesight was so bad he was embarrassed because he wanted the screen on really, really high magnification. He wanted the, the characters to be very large font. And he didn't like that. In the end, he did. He, once he talked about it, he was a lot better. He was happy to work as, as a pair. Um, company action should be done in a workshop. All company actions should be done. Even document creation. My opinion has been mod uh, modified recently by learning about internet marketing. They don't write documents. They don't write books. What they do is they do a webinar or a presentation. They record the video. They then get that transcribed and get edited and then get pushed out by a book. That's probably why the books are so lightweight. But they still cost you, you know, 39.95 per month or whatever the marketing people will sell it for. Um, workshops are hugely productive. When a workshop has finished, the job is done. And if somebody says, oh, I'll just take it away and refine it, you shouldn't let that happen. That's when you start getting people saying, oh, actually, I think I have a hidden agenda here. So you don't want to have people tidying up after them. Team Canvas. Um, anybody seen a team canvas before? Right, this is similar to the business model canvas or the lean canvas. Uh, this is developed by Alexei Ivanov and his colleague Dmitry Voloshchok. 
and it's extremely good. Well, it's a very simple process that they do. They project this onto a whiteboard and then they get their team to discuss things and stick post-it notes into the various areas. Um, I find it excellent. It's an amazing focal point for teams. And it's very good for doing strategy. It's very good for solving any sort of problems. The URLs down there, I've got a last page which has got some links and explains most of these things. So, and it's all free. Ceremonies. There's a book by Tom Melosh called Ceremonies. As you can see, it says Scrum is a framework with four ceremonies. We all know that four ceremonies. Tom has to describe to more general public, so he describes this, the wedding ceremony as a ceremony we all know. He also explains about things like the flight check ceremony for planes. Extremely valuable. Very, very good. It forces people to think slowly. It stops people being irrational if you have ceremonies, checklists, stuff like that. And the one that I recommend is the heartbeat ceremony. So if you get the book, find the heartbeat ceremony. That is where you do your metrics for your startups. Okay. Picked up the wrong one. This is one of the most important problems that we have, conflict resolution. Now, I believe that it's, it's because people have a different opinion between the way that things should be organised. Okay? If you get conflicts, they need to be resolved immediately. And if necessary, find courses on dealing with difficult people. I got sent on one, so I now know all the techniques on how to be difficult with people, including saying I'm going to trash sociocracy and winding, winding him up. Sorry about that. Right, strategy. Do not create a strategy document. Strategy should be the team. It should be the people. You should all know your strategy, and you should be revising it and keeping it fresh. It should be evergreen. So I've been in some of these marketing organisations where they say outcomes are far more important than our activities. Because we know what we're doing. The activities are just getting there. We need to go and regularly look at our outcomes. What are we aiming at? What is our roadmap? Okay, so one month or one week, one month and three months regular updates on the strategies. Um, and as you can see, I'm a great believer that you can draw pictures um, they're all right. Strategy, all documents should be executable. If they're not, mm. then you shouldn't be using And I don't mean the mm. word macros. They're for viruses. Oh. Um, so they're exploratory. I'm getting close to the end. Productivity. We all know the theory of constraints. Well, I hope we do. That's the foundation of Agile. It's the foundation of nearly all of the things that we're doing now. I've just listed Waste or Muda. This is the Japanese foundation of Lean. Um, even all activities of the team, you make sure that you're productive by knowing that. And even reading should be a team activity. I, don't, I assume most people know that Jeff Bezos insists in Amazon meetings that it starts by reading the long-form document. They don't have presentations like this. They just have documents, and they read them before the meeting and then start to discuss them. Meditation, introspection, or meditation is, is a conversation you're having with yourself. It will improve things. And I'm a great believer in immediate communications. I don't really like having distributed teams. I like co-located teams. And if you <coughs> can't do that, then you have to find ways that you can get to have a com communication going on all the time. In some of the large organizations I've worked in, we've started up a conference call and kept it going all day long. So you can just 
put it on speaker in, in the room that you're in and you can hear people swearing or making some changes. Um, and make sure there's a big board. That means that people walk past and say, what's that bit you've just stuck up there? You can start a conversation. You can have an interaction. You will update what's happening. Somebody's um, made me a note about Accelerate. XLR8 by John Cotter. No leaders or silos. Okay. <laughs> right. Data is your core. The outsourcing is incredibly important. As long as you can maintain your core, you can outsource all sorts of stuff. Okay. You always need specialist help. You'll always need lawyers, um, accountants, stuff like that. You, you take them on as and when you need them. You don't need to have them there permanently. Unless you're a legal practice, in which case you might need one. And here we get to it. Management actions can be done by admin people. I've employed apprentices. At one point, if you, if you go and find it, I had trained seven apprentices to be programmers, but they did everything. I would say to them, right, we're going to go to an exhibition, we're going to have a presentation, we're going to talk to customers, and we're going to tell them what we do. And I leave them to it. You outsource everything. Everything you can to young, enthusiastic people who desperately want to get into the high-tech world. And you can give them that by saying, I'll take on an apprentice, or I'll take on two apprentices. They'll wear you out. I mean, the ones that I had, not only would they listen to music, but they'd get up and dance and sing to the music while they were supposed to be working. They still did the jobs. They still became programmers, and they're all still working as techies. And you can outsource to yourself. If a company gets too big that you cannot communicate directly, then the answer is not to bring in managers and hierarchy. The answer is to break it up into smaller fractal organizations. I learned that from a book called Der Fractal Fabrik, which was in German, obviously. Um, and it was about a factory that was going to go out of business, and the staff agreed to buy it, and they turned it around by turning it into lots of little fractals, all separately organized and managed groups of people. So, as I say down the bottom, grow your resources. Do not think you have to bring in managers and organize yourself in a traditional hierarchical command and control way. <laughs> At this point, I was going to have some music by Mick Softly, but I will find it some other time. There's the notes, and that's it. Thank you very much.